um, let's uh, let's talk now about uh, elements of these classes. So the main and agent classes can contain many elements. They're uh, they're uh, active objects, and they can contain parameters, variables, actions, elements of presentations, etc. So I noted that parameters are static quantities. They presume they they don't change too much over time or not at all. And these parameters can have many types. Um, uh, and presentation elements associated with an agent can have a presentation time for parameters. Um, OK. Um, so uh, very importantly, parameters serve two mechanisms, OK? First of all, they can define assumptions. And second of all, they serve as a mean to communicate those assumptions from the point where this thing is created to where it's used. So um, let me state this, and I'll come back to it later. Um, when the main class is created, so when you're in main, and if main has a parameter associated with it, the experiment can specify that parameter so that when you do a simulation, that parameter has a certain value. If a person has a parameter, an agent has a parameter, the population in which the agent is subsumed can specify that parameter, okay? Or, or specify a rule for that parameter, like draw it from this distribution, okay? So if there means both of specifying um, less frequently changing values and for communicating those values, okay? Um, so they're used to communicate from the point of creation um, to where it's used, okay? Um, Okay, so I'd like you to, to um, just continue on this model, but I'd like you to save it um, in, a, um, in a different, I, I, I guess we'll just modify it and then, then we'll save it, um, excuse me. Um, uh, so, um, so there is a pre-built model for those who want to start, uh, start afresh, but I'd like to add a parameter in from the palette window, okay? I'd like to drag uh, a parameter into the, um, into the model, and I'd like to name one income and the other sex, okay? Um, so go up to general and drag a parameter in here and call it income, okay? Income, and it should be, in terms of its, again, a Java concept, t its type, it's what's called a double value, a double precision, so it's a floating point value. Okay, then I'd like to drag another one in, and this one is going to be called sex. Okay, um, and that's going to be a, um, I think a, a, an int value. It's going to be one or zero. It's actually a better way to do this, a much safer way to do this. But for now, well, this will suffice. Okay, um, so it'll be zero if it's a male, uh, one if it's a female. Um, okay, so the You'll notice if you go to, so I just, what did I do? I dragged these in and I labeled them income and sex. Okay? So yeah. Just to name, so we're, since we have that person, then we're pointing. So these are, these are attributes then of that person. Of that person. Okay. Of a particular person. Of a particular person. To a particular person. So, th so in other words, um, this, these are attributes of the class, but they will hold values for a particular person that won't be changing much over time. Right. And when this person is created, they will be specified at the point of creation, and they will be created by, therefore, the surrounding uh, population. So by dragging over there, we're adding attributes to this. Correct. Correct. So personhood now, in addition to having a presentation, a sort of image of a circle of lines associated with it, now this person has some attributes. It, they have an income and they have a sex. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, we're adding some more heterogeneity besides location-based heterogeneity. I'd like you to go look at population. Where does population live? Who can tell me where population is? It's in, it's in main. So double click in main. Um, so double click on main and go click on population. And now go, well you can actually just see it um, down in, in the parameters area. Go click on the parameters tab associated with the population. You can see it says income and sex here. Um, this allows us to specify rules 
for how income and sex are determined for people within this population. How does it know to have these things? Well, it's a population of persons, and persons have parameters, so these parameters are specified here, okay? So we could draw these from a distribution um, if, if we wish to do so, and uh, we do wish to do so. So we'll draw the first one from one distribution, the second from a second distribution. The first one, in both cases, maybe we'll use of uh, uniform. We could draw them from a normal distribution. I'm going to call, uh, use this, uh, this uniform distribution, and I'll do it between 10,000 10, and 50,000, okay? 10,000 and 50,000. Um, and then for the second one, I'm going to use a uniform discrete, uniform, uniform underbar discrete, and it will be between 0 and 1, okay? Um, so it'll be 0, comma 1. These are just one of dozens of, uh, per, of probability distributions that are supported by any logic. You can create custom distributions, so it's either table functions. You can use you know, log, a normal, log normal, Erlang, et cetera. This is a beta uh, plus on. Um, so what are we doing here? What are we doing here? We're, we're looking at properties associated with a population, and, and we're specifying the value to be used for each person within the population. Each person in the population now has a sex and an income, and the values to assume for those are specified here. And those values happen to be drawn from a distribution. We could have, you know, had we wanted to, we could have just specified a value here. Their income is, you know, um, uh, Three hundred thirty-three thousand um, uh, dollars. We could have specified a sex for that individual that was just fixed, but but we're going to actually specify expressions, and um, and these will draw values for each person separately from this distribution. Does that make sense? So when it says uniform, it's just going to apply it randomly across. So the draw with uniform probability between these two points. Previous. So the question was, if, you would, if, if this had been specified instead as the default value for, say, income, um, would that be the same? So if I took that out of here, don't, don't take it out, but let me just uh, illustrate this. And I had gone down uh, within person and, and uh, double click on person and go to income, what you'll see is there's this thing called default value, and I click that. Um, okay, so what I'm actually doing there is setting the expression to be used if nothing else is specified within a population that is contained of these persons. So if you have this here, um, you're co completely correct that if I went up to Maine um, and I went to back to Maine and I went to population, that's now filled in here because that's the default value. However, I could override that by, by saying something else here. I could say, you know, it is, their income is 10,000, and then that will be used instead. So that simply sort of prompts the default value to be used for, for a person um, uh, if nothing else is specified in that population, and you can override that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, importantly, it does not specify the initial value. It specifies the default value. Yeah. Um, okay, that's a good question. Um, if, okay, there's, there's a couple conditions where it might be more awkward to do it down here. For example, if the default value depended on some complex calculations at the global level, then yes, you could do it, but then you'd be delegating to the global level sort of this calculation and would fill it. And yeah, I mean, you could do it. It, it would kind of be breaking the abstraction barrier, forgive me for, for lapsing deep talk or regressing or um, what have you, but 
things that depends on knowledge that's really at the global level. It's kind of odd for the flu. But yeah, you could do it. Um, different populations. Yeah. You could. And, and, you one to value for sure. and you could have uh, one default value and it ends up re being reused for different populations, but you can always override it. It's not a bad strategy. I mean, it's, it's a pretty good strategy to have and can help prevent you from forgetting to have it, you know, putting in in different populations. But, but I digress a little bit. Um, let's go back to Maine and let's go to population. Um, and uh, we'll just, for transparency, we'll keep this thing here. Um, we do need something here um, uh, that default value be prompted. Okay, so now folks, let's, um, let's run this thing. Okay, um, and uh, let's navigate down to the level of population. So all we've done, here's a big picture. In person, we created these two things. Um, one of them was a continuous value coded with a double. The other was a, was a sex encoded with an integer. And then uh, up in main, with their population, because those are parameters, we can specify that. We can communicate the assumptions to have within this population, and these are the, the ways, the rules for calculating those things. We run this thing, and what should we see? How should it be different than last time? So doesn't that look the same? How is it different? People are connected with nearby neighbors because they're in a distance-based network. If they're less than 50 spaces apart, um, they're connected. What's different here? Uh, Okay, if we go down to population, what we'll actually see is that every person in the population, let me, let me rehearse that because I, I, I only showed that briefly um, before. If we're at main, we can go down to the population, we can cycle through each member of the population. You'll notice it's showing where they located, first of all. Um, second of all, we can see what their income is for that particular, um, that particular individual. Um, so, here what we see is that individuals have, not surprisingly, different incomes and different sexes, okay? Um, and we also see where they are in the network, right? Um, yeah, these guys are that these yes, okay. Okay, so, so, so let's, uh, it's a wonderful suggestion. So let's go to person, double click on person, and let's go to circle, okay? Let's go to the circle for the person, um, and um, and let us. Uh, I'm departing from script here a little bit, but for that circle associated with person, let's have its radius depend on the income. Okay, so let's have the radius in x value and y value say to be the same, and all we want it to be is the radius in x is income divided by say. Um, uh, what, 5,000, okay? Um, all right, um, and the radius y income divided by 5,000. Um, so that's our little formula, just like specify formula in Excel to calculate something. And, and um, now we should run the model. How should what we see be different? So again, what did I do? I went to person, double click there, I went to their to this circle and I went to dynamic properties and I went to radius X and did income divided by 5,000 and radius Y income divided by 5,000. Do people see that? Anyone need TA help? TA help? Okay, TA help. Okay, so uh, I went to this, uh, to this um, circle did uh, radius x and radius y income divided by 5,000. Now I'd like you to run the model. Okay? And how will it be different? Okay. Okay, now so what we see is heterogeneity there, right? Heterogeneity, okay? So the big ones have big income and the little ones have little income. How could we see that? Well, we could we could drill down in any any number of different ways, um, but uh, let's let's uh, let's let's go here. Here's someone with a lower income, twenty two thousand. Here's someone with a higher income, thirty five, um, and 
and uh, if we go, oh, this person had a higher income yet, 42. Okay? Um, There's income showing, you bring up income. Up, up of here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, now, if we wanted to, um, we could actually have income changed over time. Um, I think in the interest of time, we won't do that. But suffice it to say that if we did, it would update automatically the sizes of those, of those circles and so on. Um, OK, so um, next what I'd like you to do is, is in main, double click in main. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you go to main, I'd like to add a parameter there. We're going to add a parameter. And this will be a parameter that applies to the whole model. It's a parameter affecting the whole model. And it'll be a particular uh, population size, OK? Population size, boom. So that's population with a capital S for size, OK? OK. Um, and it's going to be an integer value, OK? One, two, three, zero. OK. So, so that's good enough. Um, and uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, to now, so, so where will, so we could set a default value of it if we wanted to, default value of 100, sure. Um, where is population, where is the assumption, if we've added a population like that, um, where would the assumption about that be specified? In, by the experiment, by the experiment. Okay, um, but before we go in and, and sort of uh, change that, to make this really the population size, where do we have to change it? Where have we encoded the population size right now? It's in the, it's in the population. So if you go to population, you go to general tab. Okay, uh, the general tab. You see this replication property um, you, you could do population size instead of 100. So now what we're telling it is the population size is something we can pick for different runs, for different experiments, we can have different population sizes. It's no longer a fixed quantity of 100. Okay, so I put it up. Uh, initial number of objects, this is the general tab of person. Um, so, sorry, excuse me, general tab population of the, of the, of the, uh, whole population there, okay? So this population has, it's replicated as initial number of objects population size. TA help, now who needs TA help right now? So all I did, big picture, I went into main, I dragged a parameter there called population size, and I made sure it was an int, I gave it a default value of 100, and now I've made population depend for its size on, on population, the number of replicated objects, okay? Depend on that. Okay, who needs a pop who needs a population help? Who needs who needs TA help? TA? No, 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 just a question. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know how we went to the simulation experiment? Yeah. And it has a population size parameter there? Yes. It doesn't automatically update that. So which one does it go with? Okay. So um so uh, if we go to simulation here under parameters, there'll be a population size, right? So that is going to specify for this particular experiment what to assume for that particular parameter value, okay? So in this case, it's 100. Um, let's run it with that. We'll just verify its behavior is the same. And then we'll, we'll, we'll try modifying this, okay? Um, and I'll see if I'm addressing your question. So there's, there's it with 100. I'm going to create a new experiment. Um, where its value, I do new experiment, okay? And I'm going to do large population, call it large population, okay? And it's just a simula it's just that, okay, go up to here. Um, uh, so, okay, yeah, it complains. You should do it with a capital L. Population size 1,000, okay? And I can run that. And this is going to be now using a, a larger population. Yeah. So in short, remember the thing. So when you have a parameter in an object, when you have a parameter in an object, the thing that creates that object is responsible for setting the value of that parameter. 
In other words, it's responsible for dictating your assumptions. When you, when you have a person, the population is responsible for setting your assumptions about your income and your sex. When you have a, a parameter within Maine, your experiment is responsible for setting the assumptions. Right. So does your feed tie to connect with that population size parameter be added to Maine to the actual population? Sure. So, so uh, rehearsing here, I dragged a parameter into your co population right. size. I made it an integer and I gave it a default value of 100, although that's less important. Uh, really beside the point. And then for population, I went down and where it says replicated, I said initial number of objects used to be hard coded as 100 okay. and I set it to be population size. Okay? That is the key linkage. That makes it functional. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. So, um, Uh, people need help here? No? Okay. Um, okay, so, so here, let's, let's do something else uh, that's uh, um, just showing off the uh, sort of those dynamic properties. So let's go into person, okay, um, and go click the oval, okay, and um, go down to, so click in the oval, there'll be the property shown, and go to dynamic, okay. Um, and there'll be fill color, okay? So let's, for the fill color, um, set something that's based on the sex, okay? Um, so uh, if sex equals, I'm gonna, you're gonna learn a little bit of Java code here. Uh, if sex equals zero, this is an equals test, so we have to say it as equal, equal. Um, if sex equals zero, in other words, if it's a male, maybe make it blue, otherwise make it, I don't know, pink. Um, or wh what color should we do? Um, blue and pink, okay. So all I did was for this, um, for this, uh, the circle here within person, for the fill color associated with it, I gave it an expression. If the, if the sex of the person is, is zero. In other words, if they're male, make it blue, otherwise make it pink. I actually don't know if it knows those colors. Yeah, it knows them. Hey, yes? Can you like throw that into the notepad or WordPad so it can really get them? Sure. Cra craning? Yeah, sure. Great idea. Did they fix that label? Uh, that's a good question. I think they did, because there was a guy in here doing it. But, okay, uh, font, um, let's, let's go set the font. Um, to be 36, um, 72, boom. Um, okay, um, okay, maybe that's a bit, maybe it is too much. Uh, so I'll do it to 48. There we go. This is the code. All this is saying is, if the person is male, he's blue, otherwise he's pink. This is kind of like an if else. If this thing is true, use this one, otherwise use that one, it's an expression. And if else does something different, it performs an action that's different for the two. This returns a different value. In this case, it returns blue. That's male, pink, and it's female. Okay? Okay, can we run it? Can we run it? Okay. Um, so uh, there we go. Okay, so now we have an encoding visually of who's male and who's female, as well as their you know. okay. Um, okay, continuing on this. Um, dynamic quantities. Okay, so ver we've introduced parameters. Parameters are used for two things. They're used for things that don't change much, and they're used to communicate those things from the point of creation to the actual point. Okay. I'm now going to stop. <laughs>